Hi and welcome to the third in our PHP and MySQL videos. This one is looking at MySQL and how to create the database for which our contact system is going to be connected to. At the current moment in time you can see Firefox and you can see the fact that uh, I've got a failure as regards trying to connect to something called localhost. Uh, if you have a watch in the triangle I'm just going to try again and at the top the errors show me is trying to reload but it fails. There's a problem loading this page. That's because my local computer, my laptop, is not able to run PHP and MySQL. It's not able to run the Apache system. It's not trying to. Uh, it can't connect something called local host. My computer at the current moment is not a web server. So the browser is trying to look for something called local host. It knows what it should be finding, can't find it, so it's failing. In the very last video for HTML, I talked about the fact of making your computer into a web server. And the one thing I said was download something called XAMPP, get the zipped file version, extract it onto a memory stick as I have here. This is my memory stick there. I've actually got two other files, FileZilla and Notepad++, but extract the XAMPP and then uh, place that, rename it, and then go into there. And we can start to look at running our web server. If we look here, there are lots of folders. We'll come back to the htdocs one, which is the only one of interest. But I'm going to go right to the end of this list. Now, if we go right to the end, you can see that I can't go any further. And the very last file in this is xamp control. I'm going to right click on there and I'm going to select run as administrator. Obviously, it warns me and I say yes. Now it's asking me which language I wish to use. Do I want to use German? Well, I can't speak German, so that wouldn't be much use. And do I want to speak American? But there's no such language as American. It's called English. However, we have to sustain because it's the closest one to ours. So we say save. And XAMPP goes off and loads up. Now, the other thing note worth noting before I go back to XAMPP is that it then creates this XAMPP control configuration file. Leave that. It's perfectly fine. That's what's now accepted the fact that we it knows our language that we want to use. The only thing I then need to do here is first of all click on start. I'm watching out to see what happens. It's attempted to start the Apache application. And I'm looking for a couple of things. A PID there and two ports here. One is for the internet. So that's running quite happily. If I get any messages coming up, I'll need to answer those. But I haven't had any here. Clicking on start from my SQL. Again, I'm looking for a PID and looking for the ports. There's the PID. Just thinking about running the port. And there's the port. You sometimes get a message about trusting as regards your local network and a, a pu public network. Obviously, you want it to be running on your local network. So I've now got Apache and MySQL running on here. Now, Apache is the whole server system that becomes a, that allows my computer to become a web server. Just to show you how that's worked, I'm going to click on there, and suddenly local host has then gone to XAMPP and opened up the splash screen here. Ask me which language I was to run. I can click on English, and there it is. So my local host is now working when it wasn't before. So I'm now running a web server. Now the part I want to do is I want to change this, and I actually want to go to PHP My Admin. Keep the local host part, the PHP My Admin. And that goes off, and may take a little while to load up. But PHP My Admin is an interface that allows you to control. MySQL uh, database management system, that's a DBMS. Uh, MySQL manages the database system for you. So it's loading up now, and as you can see, I've got a whole list down this side here on the left are a list of databases already in existence, all used by um, MySQL, by Apache, and everything else. Please don't get rid of any of these. Your system may fail if you try if you try to get rid of these. If you got rid of them, it will probably let you. But then the whole thing fails, you'd have to re download it and rerun it and everything else. It becomes a nightmare, so just don't do it. Now, what I want to do now is I want to create a database for my system to be able to connect to. So I'm going to go to Databases. The option at the top says Create Database. And I'm simply going to create a database called Contact. Ignore the fact it says test contact, that's one that I created previously. And I'm not going to worry about this. All I'm going to do is click on create. 
and there we go it's created it in this list here it's contact I have to wait a short while a database itself should come on the left hand side and there it is so I have my contact database on the left hand side that means I now have a database. Remember, uh, phpMyAdmin um, is a database management system. This is helping me manage my system, and therefore I need a database to store the data into. Go into that database by clicking on Contact, and I'm now going into the database called Contact. The one thing you'll notice with it is that there are tables. Now, if you know nothing about databases, you really do need to discover that. And there are a set of videos on access which will give you some idea of what tables are. But at the, at the short end of it, the table is really simple. A table holds things. A normal table holds your computer, your coffee cup. Imagine the mess on the floor if your table suddenly disappeared and it wasn't there. Wouldn't be able to hold anything. You need tables to hold things. And in a database, the table holds the data. That's its only job. Now we're going to need two tables, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the first table, and I know that this table is going to be called TBL underscore contacts. As you can see, I've created one previously. Um, the TBL underscore contacts, this is my naming convention. It's something I've done for many years now. TBL tells me it's a table. Now, I'd have to be pretty stupid to not realize it's a table when I'm in the table section of PHP My Admin. When it comes to coding, I know that all my tables start with TBL. The underscore, because MySQL, uh, PHP MyAdmin, doesn't allow capitalization in fields or table names. And therefore, I can clearly see the word contacts, even though it's attached to the TBL and the underscore. So that's my convention. If you want to follow one of your own, you can. The naming is not important, but you must remember it when you come to code. At the current moment in time, if you're not used to databases, if you're not used to PHP, if you're not used to MySQL, follow me exactly, and then you can start messing around with it afterwards. I know with this that I need uh, five columns. I need five new uh, fields for this. So I'm going to put five in and click on Go off it's trying to create the table uh, for me and here we have it now what I'm going to do for the first one the first one needs to become what we call a primary key I'm actually not forming a relational database here so those of you that know differences between flat file and relational will know what a primary key is and they oh my god we're going to get into relational databases we're not but I always create a, a primary key and I always contact ID in this one I always use the name of the table for the first part with the ID integers perfectly fine I want to make this a primary index or primary key and AI for automatically incremented so the system's going to start when I put my first record into here is going to call it record number one and then the next one's going to be called record number two and the next one's number three and then M4 and hopefully you can spot the sequence so I don't have to keep going on my other field, str title. str is short for string. String is a programmer's term for things that have letters, numbers, and whatever else. And the underscore title, because this is going to hold someone's title. Mr., Mrs., Miss, Master, whatever. I'm going to choose varchar here for variable character. Um, it's like a string, it's like a traditional text, but it's a little bit more flexible um, and it's probably the best one for this purpose. And I'm going to recognize that I may want, the longest word I'm going to want may be master, which has six letters in it. So I'm happy. That's fine. I can now move on to the next one. That's all I need for that first one. The next one is str f name. That's for first name. So again, just choosing a name. You don't have to call them these things. There's no compulsory nature behind this, but this is me so. I don't think anyone's going to have more than 30 letters or numbers or whatever else in their first name. So I'm going to say 30. And I built a lot of space into mine. Now I'm going to use what I've already created before. str name. That's for last name. Varchar again. And in case, I'm going to go for 40. And the last field I want for this table is str telephone. Now, telephone, you're going to think, oh, it needs to be a number, but it's not because it has a starting, it starts with a zero, so it's a vachar, because I want two brackets and I want a space in there at some stage. 
I'm going to put 13 characters to co accommodate everything I want. We're not going to worry about this when we come to build our system, but at future systems we will do. So let's build in safety. I'm then going to click on save. And it's gone off and it has created that table. I'm going to wait for the table to be listed in the left hand side so I know the system's ready for me. There you go. Just coming up now. There. Excellent. I'm going to create one more table called TBL users. And this one's going to have four columns in it. So we're going to go through the very same thing. This is to store the users. So therefore, I'm going to have a primary key, key or key, it can be key if you wish, uh, user ID, integer is perfectly fine, um, 11 is a standard number to give there, index is primary, because I want this to be my primary key, and automatically incremented. Apart from that, I stick to this convention of using the data type for the first three letters, so str for string. If it was an integer, I'd be using int. If it's a boolean, I'd be using bln. If you have no idea what they're going on about, don't worry, have a look at the videos on databases if you wish to know more about databases. If you're going to work with uh, HP and MySQL, you will need to get your head around databases at some stage. And though the videos I have are all on access that doesn't mean that what you're going to learn is not uh, useful for other database systems such as MySQL uh, the skills are generally transferable now obviously while I'm gibbering on here like some madman on the keyboard I've finished off putting the data in that I want and I want to explain to you what I've done str user underscore user this is to store the username for the person str underscore password is to store the password now it's really important I'll set this to the maximum 128 characters long this is going to be because we're not simply we're not going to ask people to type in 128 characters but we're going to use a special feature for this that means it's going to make sure that whatever password we have is encrypted so that's really important Stro first is for the first name, and this is simply so we can be quite personal with them. So when they log in, rather than using their username, we can use their first name, so we can see how we can use that later on. And click on save, and we're there. That's the system. Now we've got everything there. We're going to go into TBL contacts. And once we've gone into the contacts system. It's going to show us the structure first, so we should be able to see the structure of the system we're looking at. Now, I notice the browse is greyed out, that's because we haven't got anything in there, so I'm just going to add a single record. I'm not going to worry about the ID because I remember we set that to auto, auto incremented, so I'm just simply going to enter. Oh, notice I've already got Mickey in there. I'm just going to enter the details I need. And there's the telephone number. I'm going to go down here. Now, with a new PHP, there is a tick box here. Should be able to remove that. Um, I may not have had another name here. Oh, it seems that I have. Yeah. Before um, Disneyland sue me for using their names. It's worth noting that these uh, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck are two of the most popular words used in any database system to simply test them out. So these are common names. If you're asked to come up with uh, test data, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck are often the two names used because you need fictitious data. You can't use your mates because that would be infringing in, our, in the UK. You're infringing the Data Protection Act. But equally, anyone gets hold of it, they might find you where your mates live or and all the rest of it, and that's not fun. So you make up names. Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse are really useful for it. Um, going to click on Go. And off that goes, and there you go. So there's this actually here is the MySQL that is being used to create the system that we're looking at. This is the kind of thing we'll be writing later on. Uh, it shows you it here again, and it's told us that that's inserted two rows 
And if we now got now we've got the browse option, we can now go to browse. And there's our two records, all safely stored in there without any problems at all. I'm also then going to go to users and the very last part of this. Again, browse is disabled. I can see the structure of what I'm looking at. So I'm going to go to insert. Again, I'm not going to worry about the user ID because it's auto incremented, but I am going to go for test user. Now, here's the important side under extra password. I'm going to use this box on the side. Generally, you don't need to, but I'm going to set this to password. That's going to encrypt this, and I'm going to make mine very simple. I'm going to do something you should never do, and I'm going to use the word password. You can see I've done it before. And in this case, I'm simply going to use my name so I don't forget who the hell I am as I'm going through this. Click on Go. Don't worry about the second one, one, one user. There's the SQL command. There it is again. It's told me it's inserted the one row I wanted. Let's go back to Browse. Now you can see test user. There's the user ID. It's put one in there, so it's automatically put that number into me in there for me. And there's my name. But look what it's done to my word password. It's encrypted it. So that's why it's set to 128 characters, not because I'm playing a very long password, but to really put in 128 bit encryption onto there to make it really difficult for anyone to break my passwords by looking at my SQL database, even if they can get into the system there. Okay, that's all the tables. So in this video, we've created the database itself called Contact. We've then got two tables in that database. We've created the fields and we've created some records. Those are going to allow us to work with this later on. That's everything we need for this video. I hope that's been useful. Hopefully see you or hear you or whatever you need to do. I won't do any of those. You'll do those in video number four. Thanks very much.